So I'm going to take a different approach, at least initially, on covering mill topics than we did on the lathe. On the lathe, we kind of went through uh, a kind of a traditional book learning, if you will, steps of here are what the tools are, here are uh, work holding methods, here are cutting operations, so on and so forth. And we haven't really made anything um, other than some scrap pieces. On the mill, there are so many work holding methods, so many different cutting tools and, and cutting operations um, that I, I don't want to create a huge long series of videos that have very small differences from one to the other. So instead, I thought we'd actually start out by making something and seeing some of the operations. And, and I'll focus on specific tools and operations in each video um, if I can or where I can. And I'm also going to try to pick projects that will apply to um, a wider audience, if you will. And so to start that, we're going to make some strap clamps. Now these strap clamps are uh, something you can buy from Sureline. I believe this is one of their, what they consider their deluxe models. It's a, a step clamp, so it engages here with um, angled teeth that allow you to adjust the height of it, and then you'd use a threaded rod and a T-nut to hold it to the table. This is a little bit more advanced um, than for what we want to do for our first project. So we're going to make a simplified version of just the clamp, um, and we're not going to worry about these, these steps and the angles on them. Um, that may be a later project. In order to do this, I have some uh, pieces of aluminum that I've already cut here. So the Sherline factory clamps look to be uh, right at about two inches long, a little over three eighths inches thick, just under 0.4, and then a little over three quarters inches wide. So we're gonna go pretty close to that. Uh, now the stock that I happen to have uh, came from a, a bar, and that bar was two inches wide. So that works out well for us. It's a half inch thick, and we can make them a little bit thicker, or we can also mill these down to thickness if we choose. And then I've cut these um, all the varying sizes, but a little bit over three quarters of an inch. Now, since you may not have watched the, the lathe videos, I'm going to be repeating some of the topics um, that we have discussed in the lathe videos, uh, just in case you're only interested in the mill. One thing I wanted to point out is I have this is a, a circular saw cut, and the rest of these are all band saw cuts. Regardless of the type of saw you use, you're going to end up with burrs, whether they're on just the edges or whether they're all along the full face. And you need to take those burrs off with a file uh, before you get started on any of your machining operations. So uh, files are meant to be used in a push direction, and we'll cover files in detail and we just want to take the sharp edges and burrs off of all the pieces. So make sure you do that before you get started. On the band saw cuts, since these are the cutoffs, they do have a, um, a thin ledge on one side where the piece fell off. And we just need to do the same thing there. Just going to knock it down. Now filing is easier to do with a vise. This really isn't an ideal situation where you're hand holding it, but you can certainly do that in case you don't have a vise. Um, but you're gonna be able to go a lot faster and uh, get this done quicker with a vise. So I'm gonna go ahead and do these off camera. If you have a belt sander, or a grinder, you can use that as well, or a Dremel if you choose, and maybe you don't have a file yet. Um, but definitely get a couple of files, a couple of good quality files, um, and keep them near your machines for this very purpose. I did also want to point out that I've selected aluminum for this project, and the reason being is that aluminum is easier to work with for the beginner. So that's kind of where we're starting here. And these are gonna work fine in aluminum. In fact, it's, it's sometimes nice to have a little bit of a softer material for clamping. But you could also make these out of say 1018 steel, for example. And if you're going to go out and buy uh, stock, your best bet is to buy stock that's 
three quarters inches wide by half inch or three eighths inch thick by whatever length you want and then slicing these off um, in this type of direction rather than as I've done along this long axis. This is just the uh, size of stock I happen to have on hand so this is what I've chosen to use. It's going to take a few more milling operations uh, and a little bit more work doing it this way uh, versus having a longer piece. So that's something you need to keep in mind as you're working. Um, but again, depending on what you have on hand, sometimes you're using recycled materials or such um, and you've got to work with what you've got.